Okay, so today we're going to do variables on both sides. So to solve equations with variables on both sides, collect the variables on one side and the constants on the other. So even though this seems boring, definitely want to read through the step by step. Step one, use the distributive property to remove any grouping symbols. Step two, simplify the expression on each side of the equation. Step three, Use the properties of equality to collect the variable terms on one side of the equation and the constant terms on the other side of the equation. I'm going to highlight some important words here. Uh, we have distributive property. We want to remove grouping symbols. We want to simplify, which means combining like terms. Use properties of equalities to collect the variables on one side and the constant terms on the other. So right, we have this like fence in our equal sign. We want variables on one side, constants on the other. Use the properties of equality for solve for the to the variable, um, and then check your solution. So don't be lazy. Check. And then right here, we always have to remember to simplify. All right, let's take a look at some examples. We have 2x minus 4 equals 12x minus 14. We have 2x minus 4 equals negative 2x minus 10. We have 80 minus 80n minus 30n equals negative 10, 2 minus 5n minus n minus 1. And then we have 4n plus 0.5 equals 5, 2n minus 2. Okay, so if you want to, you can pause the video and try and work on these, or you can work on them with me. So let's start with number 1. So we want to do the smallest variable term. Which is 2x. So we're going to we're gonna have make that one the one that we subtract from both sides. The the inverse operation. So we have minus 2x minus 2x. We're left with negative 4 equals 10x minus 14. And you don't have to do the, the smallest term. It's just a nice rule of thumb. You could do the negative 12 and you'd get the same thing. So we have negative 4 equals 10x minus 14. Remember, we're trying to get the variables on one side and the constants on the other. So here we have the variable over here. So we're going to move this constant over there. So plus 14 plus 14, we get 10 equals 10x, divide both sides by 10, we get 1 equals x, so we're going to write that as x equals 1, and then let's check it, alright, check, so we have 2 times 1 minus 4 equals 12 times 1 minus 14, I'm just taking this 1 and I'm putting it everywhere I see an x here. 2 times 1 is 2 minus 4. 12 times 1 is 2 minus 14. Negative 2 equals negative 2. It works. We know that negative 2 does equal negative 2. Alright, let's take a look at the next one. So, remember, step 1 is distributive property to remove any grouping symbols. So, we're going to start here with a distributive property. We have 2x minus 8 equals negative 2x minus 10. We're going to subtract, we're going to move um, all the x's. Negative 2 is smaller than 2, so we're going to move them over there. But again, you could you could have a rule of thumb. You could always have the, cons the variables over here and the constants over here. You could try and move the smaller one. It doesn't really matter. If you do it correctly, you'll get the same answer. So, plus 2x, plus 2x. We get 4x minus 8 equals negative 10. We want all the variables on one side and all the constants on the other. So we go plus 8 plus 8. We get 4x equals negative 2. Divide by 4, divide by 4. We have a fraction, but don't be afraid. We want to simplify it. Remember, it's really important to simplify. x equals negative 1 half. And let's check it. So we have 2, negative 1 half minus 4 equals negative 2 times negative 1 half minus 10. 
So negative half minus four is negative four and a half. Um, I know I say keep stuff in fractions, but I'm gonna put it in decimal and then put it back in fraction. And then we have negative two times negative one half, which just becomes positive one minus 10. So it's just, so it's just um, one minus 10. Two times negative 4.5 is negative nine, negative nine, we know that works. All right, let's look at example number three. So we're gonna start with our distributive property. We're going to actually do it twice because there's two places where you can distribute. So we have 80n minus 30n equals negative 20 plus 50n. And then remember, this is like a 1 right there. So we're going to multiply the negative. So we have negative n and then negative 1 times negative 1 becomes positive 1. Um, next, we combine like terms. We have 80n minus 30n becomes 50n. We have a negative 20 plus 1 is negative 19. 50n minus n is 49n. And now we're going to move all the variables to one side and the constants to the other. So we're going to do minus 49n. We're left with 1n. And we know that the 1 doesn't really need to be there, so we get to write n equals negative 19. And then we want to check. So 80 times negative 19 minus 30 times negative 19 equals negative 10. 2 times 5, negative 19 minus negative 19 minus 1. All right, I'm going to use the calculator. 80 times negative 19, negative 15, 20, 30 times negative 19, so it's a minus a negative, so this becomes plus 570 equals negative 10 to negative 5 times negative 19, 95 minus negative 19 minus 1 is negative 20. So we have negative 15, 20 plus 570, negative 950 equals negative 10 times 97 plus 20. Negative 950 equals negative 970 plus 20. And then we get negative 950 equals negative 950. So lots of numbers, but in the end it works out. We checked it and we solved it. All right, number four. We're going to start with the distributive property. So we have 4n plus 2 equals... 10n minus 10. We're going to minus 4n from both sides because it's smaller than 10n. We get 2 equals 6n minus 10. Um, we're going to add 10 to both sides. 12 equals 6n. And then divide by 6. And we get n equals 2. Alright, so this one had distributing on both sides. But it was still a uh, very easy to follow process. So let's check. We have 4, 2 plus 0.5 equals 5, 2 times 2 minus 2. So we have 4 times 2.5 equals 5 times, 2 times 2 is 4 minus 2 is 2. So 4 times 2.5 is 10 equals 10. Awesome. Alright. Sorry that the, um, writing is a little bit tiny and the lighting is, is a shadow from the camera but hopefully you got these answers and let's let's get some notes on some weird stuff that can happen so when every number is a solution of the equation that equation is called an identity this can be found when both sides of the equation equal each other so this is sort of similar to the identity property of one right? Like anything times one equals itself. So this is pretty much saying like if I write one equals one, this is an identity because it's always true. 
If no number exists that is a solution of the equation, we say that the equation has no solution. This can be, these can be found when all the variables cancel and only two different numbers are left set equal to each other. So for example, if I say 2 equals 4, this is called no solution because it's never true. Alright, let's take a look at an example of an identity and a solution. So we're going to distribute first on both of these. So we get 4x minus 8 plus 16 equals 4x plus 8. And then we're going to combine like terms. So I don't need to do that yet. So we get 4x plus 8 equals 4x plus 8. So we can see right away that this is the same, right? These are the same. So right away we can write identity as our answer. But we could also subtract 4x from both sides. We're left with 8 equals 8. And then, you know, based on our example, we can see that this is an identity. It's always true. So we're going to put identity. But you could have stopped up here because you saw that it was the same, right? All right, let's say an example of no solution. So we combine like terms. So negative 15y plus 7y is going to be negative 8y plus 1 equals 3 minus 8y. We're going to add 8y to both sides. We get 1 equals 3. This is no solution. This is how we'd write it and we'd box it because this is never true. 1 is never equal to 3. Uh, so... We're really used to having equations that are solvable, but sometimes there's a trick question and you'll have an identity or a no solution. So let's try these two. So we're going to distribute on both sides. We have 10 plus 40m equals 12 plus 40m. All right, well, you can sort of see, right, we're going to subtract 40m from both sides. We're left with 10 equals 12. That doesn't make sense. No solution. All right, and then we have another distributing step. This one has a negative, so be careful. 4x minus 12 equals negative 12 plus 4x, right? A negative times a negative becomes a positive. We're going to subtract 4x from both sides. We get negative 12 equals negative 12. This is an identity because it's always true. The cool thing about identity is no matter what number you put in there, it's going to work. Right? So let's take an example. X equals 1. If I do 4, 1 minus 3 equals negative 2. 6 minus 2 times 1. So we get 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So 4, negative 2 equals negative 2. 6 minus 2 times 1, that's just 2. So 6 minus 2 is 4. We get negative 8 equals negative 8. We can also check, let's do example where x equals 3. So we have 4, 3 minus 3 equals negative 2 times 6 minus 2x. And that x is 3. So 3 minus 3 is 0. 0 times anything is going to be 0. And then 6 minus 2 times 3 is also 0. So we get 0 equals 0, so we know that's true. So it doesn't matter what you put in. You can put in 1, you can put in 3, you can put in a smiley face, you can put in any number, and it's always going to check through because it's an identity. So just make sure that you are um, practicing, that you understand how to distribute, how to combine like terms, um, simplifying, and then being careful of the trick questions of identity and no solution.